In this video, we'll take a look at pharmacy math and go over some calculations. Before we get started, I'll give a brief overview. These examples are everyday calculations used in outpatient pharmacy settings such as finding day supplies, quantity sufficiency, and conversions. I've incorporated many different routes of administrations and varied dosage forms to provide a broad spectrum of calculations. Most prescriptions for maintenance medications have simple dosing, so the calculations are often straightforward. I've tried to focus more so on the challenging calculations that require dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is a method of calculation that uses relations of units and variables to convert between different quantities. Knowing how to manipulate ratios and proportions is the basis of setting up correct calculations, especially those requiring multiple steps. There are many other types of calculations in pharmacy depending on the setting. These calculations can be a bit more cumbersome, but most can be made more manageable using dimensional analysis. Nowadays, most of these calculations have calculators or software programs implemented to make the calculation simple. Answers are color-coded according to this legend to match the classification of the drug. I've also made an interactive spreadsheet linked in the description so you can follow along. And make sure to check out the last video where I go over the data entry process of prescriptions as well as SIG codes, calculations, drug names, and indications. Now without further delay, let's get into some SIG codes and calculations. Pause the video and try working out the solutions for the empty spaces in this table. We'll start off with one POBID, which is take one tablet by mouth twice a day. If we have 60 tablets and we're taking two tablets a day, then 60 divided by two is a 30 day supply. For the eye drops, we're instilling one drop in both eyes once a day. To find the day supply, we have to calculate how many drops a bottle has. We have a five milliliter bottle. We can assume there are 20 drops in a milliliter. So we have 100 drops in a bottle. This is our first example of dimensional analysis. We've set up the calculations so that these units cancel out and give us the answer we want. So 100 drops divided by two, because they're using one drop in each eye, is a 50 day supply. This is take one tablet by mouth every bedtime. Sometimes the provider will send in the directions in terms of a strength, but you'll always wanna change that to a unit that's easy for a patient to understand. A 30 day supply requires 30 tablets. Here, 1875 milligrams is the same as three tablets because each tablet is 625 migs. So take three tablets by mouth twice a day. Three times two for 90 days is 540 tablets. For this one, the dosage form is a sublingual tablet, so you want to dissolve that under the tongue. So the directions are dissolve one tablet under the tongue every five minutes as needed. Do not exceed three tablets in 15 minutes. Nitroglycerin is usually packaged as 25 tablets per bottle, and I usually default to a 30-day supply. This one is an oral solution or liquid. The SIG is given in terms of a mass, but we want to convert that to a volume that the patient can measure out. So we'll use the concentration as a conversion factor. 60 milligrams times the concentration equals 7.5 milliliters. Again, we see that these units cancel out and we're left with milliliters. They're taking 7.5 mills three times a day for 30 days, so that comes out to 675 milliliters. This drug is an injectable. The directions are inject 140 migs or one pen under the skin every two weeks. Avoid saying subcutaneously because some patients might not know what subcutaneous means. If we're dispensing six pens and they're using one pen every 14 days, then that's an 84 day supply. Here are a few more cardio drugs. Again, pause the video and try working out the solutions for the empty spaces in this table. This is take two capsules by mouth twice a day. 360 divided by four capsules is a 90 day supply. Always make sure the directions match up the dosage form of the drug. This one is a capsule and the next one is a tablet. Take one tablet by mouth four times a day. A 30 day supply is 30 times four for 120 tablets. Warfarin dosing can be tricky, but writing out all the steps makes it much easier. So these directions are take one tablet by mouth on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, take one and one half tablets all other days of the week. For this example, you'd want to avoid saying 1.5 tablets because the patient might mistake that for 15 tablets. So fractions like one half as shown in this example are preferred when writing out most directions and when not working with whole numbers. Then let's make a table like this to see how many tablets the patient is taking in a week. For a 90 day supply, there are 12.86 weeks 
If they're taking 9 tablets every week, then we would need 115 tablets for a 90-day supply. Next up are eye drops. This is instill one drop in the right eye once daily. First calculate how many drops are in a bottle. It comes out to 50 drops per bottle, so this is a 50 day supply because we're using one drop a day. This is typical dosing for the Eloquist starter pack. Take two tablets by mouth twice a day for seven days, then take one tablet twice a day. For a 30 day supply, the first taper is seven days followed by 23 days. So two times two times seven is 28 tablets. The second part is 23 days. One tablet twice a day is two times 23 for 46 tablets. Add those up for a total of 74 tablets. This is take one tablet by mouth three times a day. 90 times three is 270 tablets. The last one here is inject 30 megs or one syringe under the skin every 12 hours. We need six mils, but let's convert that to syringes to see how many we need to grab off the shelf. Set up the conversion factors so that the units cancel out and we're left with syringes. Directions call for two syringes a day, so 20 divided by two is a 10 day supply. Now let's take a look at some neuro drugs. This is take one and one half tablets by mouth every day. A 90 day supply requires 90 times 1.5 or 135 tablets. This is take one tablet by mouth every morning and one and one half tablets every evening. 75 divided by 2.5 tablets a day comes out to a 30 day supply. This is take four capsules by mouth three times a day. They're taking 12 capsules a day, so 360 divided by 12 is a 30 day supply. This one is a solution and the SIG is given in terms of a strength, so we'll want to convert that to a volume. Set up your calculation like this, and we see that they're taking 20 mils twice a day for 40 mils a day. 40 times 30 is 1,200 mils. Here's an injectable used for migraine prophylaxis. Inject 70 megs or one syringe under the skin once a month. Three pens is a three month supply. This is take one tablet by mouth three times a day as needed for anxiety. 30 times three is 90. 100 mgs by mouth four times a day is take one capsule by mouth four times a day. 120 divided by four is a 30 day supply. On to our next set. This is take one tablet by mouth every morning and one tablet every day at noon. Two tablets a day for 28 days is a 56 day supply. This is take one tablet by mouth every 8 hours as needed for muscle spasms. 42 divided by 3 is a 14 day supply. Carbidopa levodopa is a combination of two drugs so you'll see two strengths. The first number refers to the strength of the drug name first. So the 25 mg refers to the strength of the carbidopa and the 100 mg refers to the levodopa. So the directions are saying take 50 mg of carbidopa or two tablets by mouth every 6 hours. We're taking 8 tablets a day, so 720 divided by 8 is a 90 day supply. This is apply one patch to the skin every 72 hours as directed. Each patch lasts 72 hours or 3 days, so 10 patches should last 30 days. Next one is dissolve 1 and 1 half films under the tongue because it's a sublingual film every day. If we're using 1 and 1 half films a day for 28 days, then we need 28 times 1.5 or 42 films. This is take one tablet by mouth four times a day as needed for pain. A 30 day supply calls for 120 tablets. Last one is inject one syringe in the muscle once a month. One pen is 1.5 mils, so that's a month supply. Moving on to some gastro drugs and our last set for this video. For suppositories, remember to include unwrap in the directions because a lot of people have never used suppositories. So this is unwrap and insert one suppository every bedtime for one month. A 30 day supply is 30 suppositories. For Zofran ODT tablets, this is dissolve one tablet by mouth every eight hours as needed for nausea and vomiting. We could use up to three tablets a day, so 30 divided by three is a 10 day supply. 
Fun fact, the 3350 in polyethylene glycol refers to the mass in Daltons. This is dissolve 17 grams in 4 to 8 ounces of fluids as directed and take by mouth daily as needed for constipation. 510 divided by 17 is a 30 day supply. Another fun fact, the brand name for diethylpropion is Tenuate, short for pretend you ate. It's a play on words because it works as a weight loss agent. The directions are, take one tablet by mouth three times daily, one hour before meals. 30 tablets would last 10 days. This is apply one patch to the skin behind the ear for three days. Four patches last 12 days. Lactulose dose like this is used for hepatic encephalopathy instead of constipation. First, we need to convert 30 grams to mils. After the calculation, we see that it takes 45 mils by mouth four times a day. Each pint is 473 mils, so we have a total of 1892 divided by 180 is about a 11 day supply. Last one is take two tablets by mouth four times a day for two days, then take two tablets every day for 12 days. Add that up and we get a quantity of 40 tablets. Alright, that's all for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you have any questions, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the helpful links in the description and stick around for part 2. In part 2, we'll cover some respiratory, endocrine, inflammatory, immunomodulatory, and infectious disease drugs.